Hey everybody, welcome back to some more live coding. Tonight, we're going to look at Braintree. Braintree payment system. So Braintree is a PayPal service. So I guess they bought them, that's my understanding is they must have bought them out a while ago. And the the reason I think they bought them is because they have a nice API. PayPal is well known for having a very poor API compared to Stripe. And so Stripe has been winning a lot of people there. So Braintree offers supposedly a really nice API. <clears throat> and one of the big benefits of choosing Braintree is that you get to accept PayPal since it is a PayPal service. So like you can see here, it accepts uh, these. You can do credit cards and PayPal and Venmo, which is another PayPal thing, and Apple Pay and all of that. So that's the big benefit over Stripe is that you can still use PayPal, but you don't have to use the PayPal API. You can use the Braintree API, which is supposed to be a lot better. And the pricing, I think the pricing is exactly the same as PayPal. Uh, they basically take a small percentage and a small flat fee. So tonight the goal is basically to check out the API, see how it is, see how easy it is to use, and use their sandbox to to do a purchase, and get notifications using their webhooks, and also check out how their subscription service works. So we can check out one-time payments and setting up a subscription. So that's what we're going to look at. And I already did sign up for a Sandbox account. So if you go to their page and you just click on Login, then at the bottom it says Looking for the Sandbox. And then you go down there and you can either sign up or log in. So if you go to Sign Up, then you can actually log in with PayPal. If you fill, so you fill out your name here and then you click Try the Sandbox and then you can log in with your PayPal account. So you don't even have to make a new account. So yeah, here, log in with PayPal. And I should already be logged in. I'm already logged in with my PayPal account. And so now we're in the sandbox. You get your sandbox keys down at the bottom, and then you get some documentation right here. And then I guess right here is you got your transactions and your subscriptions. So they have a bunch of plugins already. So if you look at third party integrations, then what do we have here? Okay, so they've got shopping cart integrations like WooCommerce. That's a really big one on WordPress sites. Enterprise plugins, Magento, it's another CMS, Salesforce, SAP. Okay. So basically, they've got a whole bunch of plugins. Yeah, Xcart for PHP, Drupal Commerce. Yeah, but we're, we're going to be building our own. So if you do use those, you can probably just drop these in. Okay, we don't want those. We want to build our own custom integration, so we'll look at the documentation. And let's check out these other pages real quick. Uh, subscription search. Yeah, so this is... When we set up some fake subscriptions, this is where they would be. And then you have to set up your plans beforehand. So why don't we go ahead and try that. Let's. We're going to have to do this eventually, right? A recurring plan so why don't we look at that creating a plan so plan ID we'll call it uh, monthly subscriber moth love left plan name uh, the monthly subscriber plan description basic subscription price five Five US dollars. And we'll do, sure, why not add a trial period? 
So you can do a trial period, that's cool. Billing details, um, okay, so you can tell it to expire, let's do never expire bill every month. And then we can do add-ons and discounts, so what do add-ons look like? Add-on is a supplemental amount. Okay, let's try making one. Now what do we have? Okay, so you can tack it on to the entire subscription, or you can tack it on just for like one or two months if you want to. And it's just a flat fee, so I wonder if you can you add the same add-on more than once. So we can call it like extra VIP. Extra VIP bonus. An add-on to the basic subscription. And the amount will be an extra dollar for... Yeah, just for the duration. Okay, so now that we have an add-on, I guess I have to go all the way back to my subscriptions and start over. Plans. Yeah, let's create a new plan. Okay, so add-ons. Okay, we add one. Can we add it again? No, we can't. Dang. I was, it would be nice if you could just add on, like, a number of those. Maybe. Oh, there is an amount. I see an amount right there. Okay. How do I... Can I change the amount? Please? Okay, add... There's no amount option. Braintree add multiple add-on. Alright. I guess not. You'd have to add separate ones. But that's fine, we'll still create just a... Monthly subscription. Basic monthly subscription. Basic sub. Okay, we'll do five bucks. With a trial period of seven days. And bill every month, forever, until they cancel. Okay, so now we have a subscription plan. Okay, and it tells us we have no active, no canceled, no past due, no pending, no expired. It tells us when the last change was. We do have an add-on that we could add. No email notification, that's fine. Okay. Reports, vaults. Transactions. Okay, so now let's go back to the docs. And so we've got examples, tutorial, and integration guide. And it looks like they've got client SDKs for Android, iOS, and JavaScript. So those are for the clients. And then on the server, they've got Java.net, Node, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby. Okay, let's open some of these in new tabs. Payment methods. Okay, so these are the different payment methods they offer. PayPal, credit cards, Apple Pay, Venmo, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, MasterPass, I haven't heard of that one, Visa Checkout, Union Pay, and ACH Direct Debit. So you can actually pay with uh, your bank account directly. PayPal's a really good one. I, that's really, PayPal credit cards are kind of the most important ones, I think, and Venmo's nice too. Dark Coder says, hi, welcome Dark Coder. We're checking out Braintree. Sandbox testing. Okay, so they've got webhooks. It looks like you can test pretty much everything in their sandbox. Recurring billing. Okay. So I opened up these in the other tabs. So we've got examples, tutorial. It says take about 25 minutes, easy. It's in JavaScript. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll go through that. Maybe that'll clear everything up. Okay, we've got getting started. Yeah, let's start here. Let's read this page. Get started, key concepts. We provide complimentary client and server SDKs to help complete your integration. The client SDKs, yeah, okay, we just looked at those, how it works. Yeah, so I did look at this earlier. Your client has to hit your server first, and then the server gives you back a token, which you send to Braintree, 
which Braintree then verifies with your web server by sending it back to Braintree. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting workflow. Stripe doesn't require this extra step of the token and the knots, so there is that extra request that has to go through where you have to hit your server and Braintree and do this big loop, so that can add like some slight delay to your, your checkout process, but to me that's not a big deal. One extra second of spinny icon is worth getting the PayPal option. Okay, so API keys. Yeah, we got an API key. Next page, we got to set up the client. So it gives us a couple options here. I guess we'll just look at the JavaScript one. Add a drop into your page. So it looks like we could just add like a buy now button, kind of like you do with PayPal. Okay, get a client token. So to get the client token, you have to hit your web server. Okay. Now, are we still, are we doing the, no, we're not doing this tutorial. This is still just explaining. So we're gonna go through this tutorial and actually work through it, but this is just a, kind of the overview. So high, at a high level, you would drop in a button on your page. Okay, so you just drop in this little script on your HTML, and then you get a client token from your server, your web server, before you hit Braintree. Okay, yeah, you create a sandbox account, you send the payment nonce to the server. Okay, we don't need to get, this is, we're gonna go through all this, so I don't wanna get caught up in how the nonce and the tokens work yet. Okay, so on the server side, an example of setting it up, you just you create an object and give it your parameters, like your keys. Okay, then it gives you a method to generate the token for your client, which your client is going to request from you. Okay, so that's how you say you just send it back to them using uh, their their token generate function that they provide. Okay, receive a payment nonce from your client. The client is gonna get the nonce from Braintree. And then we can create the tri transaction once we have the nonce. Then Braintree will recognize our request because the nonce will match. And a nonce is a number used once. It's just a, it's just a unique value. And then you test, okay, and then you transition, and then you go live by just swapping out the sandbox to the, the public one. Okay, so that, at a high level, that's not too bad. There is that extra step of the token and the nonce, but since they provide the function to generate the token, then all you have to do is pass the nonce, then it should be just fine. It should be really easy. So even though I want to use a, a Python backend, it looks like they even have a Flask example here. So it looks like you can just run it out of the box and basically test it out. Let's check out their app, app.py real quick. Okay, so let's kind of skip over the boilerplate. Yeah, and check out the routes. We've got the index, which just redirects you to new checkout, okay new checkout is right here and that does the token right okay so they provide the token function again so generate client token should be imported up here yeah from gateway so they provide this function to generate the token and that's just a very simple endpoint that gives them back the token and then there's find transaction and transact. Okay, so you just call transact. If success, redirect to show checkout. If error, show error. Okay, so yeah, that looks that looks pretty easy. <clears throat> I so I'm gonna go ahead and 
Let's see. Let's go ahead and do the tutorial. We'll do it in JavaScript. Thanks for trying out the preview of our new tutorial. Preview of the new tutorial. So this isn't even like a finalized tutorial. It's intended to get you from a blank slate to a test transaction as quickly as possible. All right. Before you begin, make sure you've got Node.js and NPM. I sure do. Node 11. You also need a console. Okay. NPM install express generator. So express is just a really, really lightweight in version four. Express is a really lightweight uh, Node.js web web framework. Get a Braintree sandbox. Okay, so we've already got the sandbox account here. Right, and in here is where we get our our secret key and everything. Our merchant ID is all down here, and that's pretty much all we need. Okay, so set up a basic app. We're gonna go ahead and start a new app. So we'll say express, and we'll call it brain tree tutorial. And they said uh, dash view equals HBS, that's handlebars. That's a templating, uh, it's a template system. Okay, install the dependencies. We'll go ahead and CD and then run npm install to install the dependencies from the package.json and then run the app. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste that. So we set the environment variable of debug and we just call run start or npm start. Okay, it didn't give me a link, but we can run it. We can go type it in ourselves. 3000. Okay, so the express app is up and running. Very good. Let's go back here. Install Braintree. Okay, so npm install Braintree. It's pretty straightforward. Add in the drop-in UI. Our basic app will have one page on the client and one route on the server. Express has already generated an index view, which we just saw here. And Okay, so let's open, let's do it in VS Code. I'm going to open this little Express app in VS Code. And then we've got app.js, which is where, where most of the magic happens. So we've got all the, all the imports at the top. That's fine. And then the views, which just sets up handlebars. This is all the middleware, where it just sets up loggers, cookie parser, middleware. Okay, then we set up the routes here. There's a 404. An error handler. And then that. Okay, so here it says app use index router. And if we hold control and click on it, it should bring us there. Now that's index router routes index. So if we go into routes index, here we can see this is the homepage route. And it's gonna render index, so there must be a template views, uh, one called index, yeah. So here is our index template, which is where we need to drop in, okay, it says we need to drop in the, temp the drop in thing. Include the Braintree SDK client, okay. Oh wait, it wants us to put this in the head tag, so we're gonna put this in our base template. And this is just including a couple JavaScript files. So we're including the, the Braintree JavaScript and jQuery, which I guess is a dependency for it. Okay. Note, we only include jQuery to reduce the complexity of our tutorial code. Okay, so it's actually not a dependency for theirs. It's just to help us out in our tutorial. So there are two ways to authorize the client. A client token and a tokenization key. A client token requires a round trip to your server 
Yeah, so that's where they hit our endpoint just to get a token, which is generated from a function that they provide in their API. The other option is a tokenization key, which is a static key that reduces the privileges. I see. So you can get a dynamic one, which gives you full capabilities, or a static one, which reduces the round trip, but only gives you a very limited subset. Okay, so this would be ideal if that subset is, is sufficient for our needs, and then if it's not, then we can do the round trip one. For this tutorial, we'll use a tokenization key, which is stored in your Braintree control panel. Okay, so this is our control panel. It's probably in the vault. No, it says, wait, where'd it go? You can find it in your sandbox control panel. Go to account my user. Um, okay, go to account my user under API keys, tokenization keys, and encryption views. Click view authorizations. There it is. Okay. Okay. That's where we need to be. Now what do we need, which one do we need to grab? You should see a key under your tokenization keys. Okay, let me close some of these windows. I got too many windows open now. This one I'm gonna bookmark because I'm gonna be using that one a lot. And okay, so we need our tokenization key. We'll go ahead and generate one. Okay, now we have one. Okay, so with our tokenization key, we're going to add it into our templates. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right there for now. Okay, our drop-in UI consists of a small amount of HTML markup, which will be initialized using the Braintree JavaScript that we added above. Okay, so it wants us to drop in this nice little bit. And we have to add our own key. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so there's a little bit of HTML and then there's a little bit of script. So the HTML is actually just a little bit. You've got the drop in wrapper, checkout message, drop in container, and then a button. And we actually need to pop in our authorization key here. So this is a public value. The clients will see this value. Okay, and then we just say the container, which one we want to use, which uh, ties to this ID here, drop-in wrapper. And so this script is basically going to call Braintree drop-in create using our token and our container. And then it's going to also add a callback here, which is going to add an event listener for the click. So when they click, it can actually do something. When they click, it's going to do the post to Braintree for locally. I think that's going to post to our website. And then a checkout message on success or not. Okay. So that's where, that's where all the good stuff's going to happen. So let's go back to our page here. I guess we're going to have to do... Let me tmux here. And I'll do npm start, or what was it? Okay. Okay, so now this should be running again. And we can see it takes a second to load the page, load the, the card stuff, but it initializes itself whenever the page loads and runs the JavaScript. Okay, so all we get is actually pay with card. We're not seeing the PayPal one yet, so maybe they'll maybe they'll talk about that in a minute. Okay.
Okay, so that that's actually pretty slick. Now, how do we actually start, you know, using it? So the payment, where's the payment method nonce? The payment method nonce is a string returned by the client SDK. It's a one-time use reference to the payment information that your customer provided. And the next step will set up your server to reserve this nonce, receive this nonce, so it can be used to create the transaction request. Yeah, so this is, this is gonna post to our site with all this information that our server is gonna send off to Braintree. Handle checkout. Stripe is a little different where I think it just hits Stripe directly and then Stripe informs you when you're done. Handle checkout. Okay, so now we need to we need to add a route for the checkout. So under routes, we need to make a new one called checkout.js. And I think we can just copy over what's in index, but we're going to swap out slash with slash checkout. And we're actually going to render a checkout template. And we don't know what we're gonna pass it yet. And so we're also going to need a checkout.handlebars okay in routes slash checkout oh okay so in our action in actually in our um, checkouts here we all only need to make that the slash because I guess in our routes file yeah in our routes or in in our main app file when we set up the routes we're actually going to set up the prefix already. So everything inside the checkouts route is gonna be relative to its prefix that it already has. And then yeah, we'll need to add the import up at the top. And why not to be consistent, why don't we call it checkout router? And then down here we'll map checkout to the checkout router. This is our checkout router rendering the checkout template now. And it wants us to put this logic in there, so... Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it and then we'll look at it in the editor. Okay, includes, and then, okay, so here's... Here's where it connects. It connects using all of your credentials. This is, we, we pull the nonce from the client here and then we call transaction sale which i guess is where it actually performs the sale we give it the amount the nonce from the client and then any options we have and then we get a success and fail callback so that's okay i mean that's this is where we would handle like update the user's status or whatever we wanted to okay be sure to add your own merchant this that okay Connect the route to app that G. We did that. Create a test connection, run the app. Okay. So we actually will need to do. Um, add in my, my secret key and stuff. The JS read file. I need to do a quick. Uh, quick read file because I put my I put my key into a file. Read file sync, that's what I want. Okay. Read file sync, this is gonna be, I guess, hopefully I can just use the tilde. Well, I guess we'll find out. It's gonna be a Braintree sandbox, merchant ID, that's where I put it. And same thing with the public key and the private key. public key and private key. Now I'm gonna have to import 
fs. And that's just the file system module that Node.js provides. Now, do I need to call, yeah, dot body or dot text? Dot to string? Why not? Just to be, just to be explicit and make sure. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, so now our connect is wired up. So this form should post to our endpoint that we just created that actually has our sandbox information. We'll hit submit. Expiration date is not valid. Oh, there it goes. Paying with card, check. Oh, okay, so we can either hit submit payment or choose another. Oh no, still just cards. That's fine, we'll use that one, we'll hit submit payment. Now, should it actually be doing something? Let's go back and check our log. Slash checkout, 404. Do I need to restart it since I added the route? Let me try hitting it again. Slash checkout, 500. Okay, so it found it now, but it's actually erroring out. Now, I wish you would. It's probably the file system read. But why won't you show me the error? Is there a log file? Is there a verbose option? Yeah, there is. All right. Now maybe I can get... Nope. Let me try just refreshing it just to make sure because maybe the nonce... Maybe the nonce expired or whatever. Submit. No, 500. Okay, I have a feeling it is FS read file sync. I probably did it wrong. Returns the contents of a file. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe it's also doesn't like the slash. We'll just eliminate that possibility as a as a problem. And I will confirm brain tree sandbox merchant ID private key public key. Okay. Let's restart the server. Refresh our page, submit a payment. Okay, now 500. Now, why is it not giving me? Why is it not giving me the 500 error? Maybe there's some info on my console? No, nothing. Well, let's go back here. Did I miss something? I guess... Let's go back here and if there's an... We'll do some, some logging here. Okay, console.log connecting to Braintree. console.log getting nonce okay console.log creating transaction this I think is probably where it's failing if results we'll say console.log success else 
console.log error console.log result. Control shift I to format everything. And then I'm actually gonna close all these. I'm gonna run it down here. npm start. Oh shoot. 2763. Run. Now, maybe I'll try submit again. Five hundred. Okay. Let me restart this page. Okay, submit. Now, is it... It's not done, right? Like, it's saying... It's saying, hey, you've got one more step to go. So back here, let's check our console. Okay, so we the first time around we had request path contains unescaped characters. Undefined. Connecting to branch tree, creating transaction, request path contains unescaped, okay. Creating transaction, request path contains unescaped characters, that's online in my file, where is that? Okay. So back in our code, let's figure this out. Creating transaction. So let's try logging the nonce just to verify we're actually getting it. Creating transaction, this is where it fails. Oh, so, you know, actually there is... Connect the route, create the test transaction, npm start, and this is the one... You know what I just remembered is that they, uh, they have special credit card numbers that represent different things. So, if you put in a specific card number, it actually will force a failure because that specific card number represents I want to return a failure. Oh, 920. So I'm going to actually put in I'm going to put in the values that they actually tell me to. 20. Okay, see whoa, CVV, I didn't even get that. I didn't even get an option for that. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Getting nonce. Oh, I need to restart it since I changed the code. All right. Four ones. And then, what was it? Oh, nine, 20. Submit. Submit. Now. Okay, so we definitely got our nonce. Request path contains unescaped characters. Request... Oh... Is it, um... Yeah, let's, let's figure this out. Um, let merchant ID equal this. Let me make sure that this stuff is even working. I have a feeling it's I messed it up there. Okay, so it is, it's just a buffer. Um, read file sync example no JS. Let's get that sorted out real quick. Do I do a dot string? Is a dot stri to string? Or do I need a, a decode? Let's 
sort of the... It says it returns the data. I guess I just need to encode it. I need to tell it the encoding. Is that the second parameter that I can pass it? Options. It says I can pass it some options, like encoding. Is it UTF-8 or UTF-8? Encoding UTF-8. Now, this is not part of the tutorial. I just didn't want to paste my private key, even though it's just for the sandbox. I didn't want to post that private key. So, okay, we just restarted it. I'm going to try this one more time real quick. 0920. Okay, that's much better. So I just need to pass it the encoding. That was the big problem. Okay, so uh, I have a feeling this will work a bit better now. Let's restart our code in the console. Let's refresh it here, fill out our test number, fill out this. Okay, I'm gonna shrink these windows now. Let's see, I want half screen here and half screen there. And this to go away. All right, moment of truth. Wait, we already got a 500 error? Wait a second. So, the 500 error is happening uh, here on the first one. I thought it was happening on the second one. The request path contains unescaped characters. Now, wait a second. Getting nonce. Okay, so it's getting past that stuff. That's fine. And it's it is loading them right. So we got the nonce creating transaction, and then it's down here. Now, why is it complaining about what's going on down here? The nonce from the client, that's all example code. And it's like, uh, it's not even getting to these callbacks because it's not running. Oh, I guess this is the error that it's printing out right there. So why is it why is it failing there? Okay, I'm going to do a Google. What is it? Oh, I lost it. Come back. Type error unescaped characters. Is that like is that from my key? Like did they give me a key? that doesn't work in the URL. 
Oh, look at this. I didn't realize that it actually ties the, the width of my two windows together. And as I make one smaller, it makes the other bigger. That's cool. Your path variable contains a space. I'm not I'm not using any spaces. And I can't print out the URL because I'm not even generating the URL. Their library's generating the URL. Do I need to like set did I miss a step in the tutorial or something? Let's let's go through this again real quick. Okay, we generated the app, we installed Braintree, we dropped in the UI, we added the Braintree SDK, okay, we created a tokenization key, and we added it, let's see, we added that in the layout, and then it was in no, it was in the index where we dropped in our sandbox key. That's a public key. Okay, we're posting to slash checkout with the payment nonce, which is going through. What's interesting is it's not even... It's not even returning us the error check your console. It's not even doing that. Because our server's dying and panicking. Okay, so that's, we did that. Yep, yeah, be sure you add your own token key. We did that. Handle checkout. Okay, so yeah, we, we mapped checkouts. Add the payment logic. Add routes checkout.js. checkout.js so I guess we never ended up using that handlebars file so we don't need that and our JavaScript file is basically a straight copy from theirs be sure to add your keys yeah we did that I'm just gonna make sure like yeah all of these do exist I didn't like typo any of these file names or anything yeah all three of them exist add the checkout yeah we did that create a test transaction okay Anybody have any ideas why it would, I mean, is their library just out of date? Is their tutorial just not working with Node.js 11? So we're getting the nonce, we're printing it out, we're getting past here, and this is where Okay, we'll give it one more shot here. We'll restart, submit payments. What was it, 0920? Okay, yep, there's our error. Um, at new client, object, promise, brain tree, HTTP. So this is where it's erroring. Yeah, brain tree, rat promise, let's see. Here it is. See, like this config base merchant path slash transactions. It's like this is broken. 
this gateway config. Yeah, do we need to set up the gateway? Is that something that needs to happen? So did they do that already? Uh, yeah, gateway. Gateway equals Braintree Connect. Yeah, Braintree Environment Sandbox. And that seems to be working okay. So maybe we can do like a gateway dot, um, I don't know, just print out some information about the gateway. Yeah, let's like print out our merchant ID just as kind of a sanity check. Like, okay, the, the merchant ID, you know, the, it did log in and get a merchant ID and that's all valid. Okay, let's try those. Undefined, undefined. Interesting, so it's it's like maybe it, it didn't connect? <sighs> well, okay. Their, their tutorial... Is their tutorial broken? Is their tutorial broken or did I miss something? Include the brain trick line SDK, yeah. Okay, so... What I'm gonna do now is screw their tutorial. We Well, we did it, we understand it. We did everything we should have. It just didn't actually work. And just to confirm, we will like uh, check out of transactions. Uh, let's go back to transactions. Yeah, so it didn't, it didn't create any. So let's try this then. We're gonna try it on our own. Yeah, let's uh, get clone the brain tree flask example and why don't we open code there? Brain tree flask VS code. Okay, so this one we should just be able to just run it. It should tell us how to run it. Start server, Python app.py. Oh yeah, so let's do uh, Python 3 app.py. Python 3-m pip install flask. Actually, there's probably a couple other ones like Braintree. So let's go ahead and just do Python 3-m pip install dash our requirements no requirements excuse me i'm gonna take a drink of water okay so uh, there we go. Running on here. Awesome! So th their example here works really great too. Okay. How about Python 2? So, <laughs> I gotta say, not, not very impressed with, with their examples. Like, the first one, the, the tutorial seems broken, unless I'm just being a dum-dum. Uh, their flask example is broken out of the box, too. Last updated, uh, last commit February 8th. Copy the contents of example.env. Okay, okay, so maybe that's my fault. Example.env and 
credentials can be found into a new file named .env. Okay. .env. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, cat, uh, what is it? Brain tree, sandbox public key. Okay, public, Oh. Okay, and merchant ID is this one. Save, and what I'm gonna do here is say echo bt private key equals cat home brain tree Sandbox private key. And I'll go ahead. <sighs> Will that work? Okay, now let's try and run it again. And, all right, it doesn't break now. User error there. So where's app.py, app.py? And here we, oops, did I just kill it? No, it's still up. Okay, close, close. So what we're really interested in here is, okay, so yeah, again, the, the landing page just sends you to new checkout, which generates your token and puts it in the HTML file. So let's see, where does that token get output? I guess that gets output in the, uh, in the JavaScript. So we're looking for the token. It was called token, right? Client token. Okay, so it's not in the layout. Is it in show? No, is it in new? There it is. Yeah, so that goes in the JavaScript that we dropped in. Just like we did before. Right here, authorization token goes right there. You just tell it the container. Oh, this is where you can tell it to add other payment methods too. Okay, so let's watch the log while we submit this we'll do card and then we'll submit the same test card info all right and cross our fingers and hit test transaction all right and now it says success well okay <laughs> Let's look at the code again. So this is all the same. The, the, the client side is exactly the same as we looked at in that JavaScript tutorial. So nothing changed there. The only thing that changed is in the back end, we are using the Python library to generate the token. And then we're also using the Python library to call transact. And transact is being imported here from Gateway. And so transact is where we send it all of our options. Now I wonder how do we get the information back and know that it was tied to the user? Do we have to store that nonce? 
that way we know when Braintree says, hey, this nonce was done here, or do we just, I guess we validated ourselves since we're doing it and we already know who the user is at this moment because it is tied to the nonce, then we can do it right here, synchronously. Without without having to get a, like a, an IPN or a webhook back. Because we get the answer right then and there from Braintree. So that's that's kind of nice actually. I guess that's one of the benefits of doing it with that extra call to the nonce. Okay. So if I wanted to move this in Django, it would be incredibly easy. All I'd have to do is make the same endpoints. Uh, basically an endpoint an endpoint to present the client token, whether it's through a template or a REST API or whatever. Okay, so those are kind of straightforward now. What about this one? Oh, this is the one that says success or not and like pulls up your transaction details. Okay, so on the next page it pulls up and figures out whether it worked or not. So that's that's actually really straightforward once you get down to it. So you need to make the template, which uh, they need a way to get the token. And then they submit you the payment, which you submit on their behalf using the nonce. And then you get the, res you get the response right away. Okay, so how about subscriptions? How about subscriptions? So, let's see. And technically we didn't need the webhook. We didn't need the webhook to verify that their payment went through. So, we might not need it after all. But now I am interested in how to do the subscription. Okay. Pseudo shop. I like it. Okay. End-to-end -end examples, yeah, we just looked at the Flask one. I wonder if I download their one and run it, if it will work. Maybe I was using a wrong version of Node or something. Something it didn't like. It didn't like something. But that's okay. We would have figured it out uh, if we had to. I'm just glad the Python won't work, because the Python backend is the one I actually want to use. So linking to PayPal to test PayPal transactions. Follow the instructions for linking a PayPal sandbox account. Oh, that's cool, because I do have a PayPal sandbox account. And those are free too. Okay, so you create it, you create, oh, uh, you have to go create a new app. And then you go into the brain tree and you, you link it. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that now, but that's good to know, so, yeah, if we wanted to go live, we would basically swap a couple things out. We would swap out our secret, we would swap out our, our key, our private key, our public key, and then we would also swap out... Where is it? Here, the gateway. Let's see. I'm pretty sure you sp we specified somewhere in here the sandbox. No? Okay, I guess it's only on the server side. So on the server side. Now wait a second. It's not anywhere 
Okay, it's here. So, if you want to go live, yeah, everything that you need to change is right here. You change your private key, your public key, your merchant ID, and then I guess it's probably called production or live. I have to check that out, but that's about it. Yeah, production, environment production. Okay. So that's all good. Now I want to see subscriptions. Oh, recurring bill. So, okay, recurring billing versus subscriptions. Now, okay, they are subscriptions. Sometimes they are called different things. With Braintree's recurring billing, you can charge your customers automatically in monthly increments. To set this up, you'll need to create a plan, which we already did, right? We, over here, we created a subscription. Wait. Yeah, there it is. Uh, plans. Yeah, there's our monthly subscription plan we created. Now we want to let somebody buy it. Mm, buy it. Uh, subscription, subscriptions, guides. Client authorization, payment method, nonces, transactions, customers' payment methods, tools. Recurring billing. Oh, this is the guide. To set this up, you need to create a plan. Then use subscription.create to associate each customer's preferred payment method with the plan. Integration steps. Create the plan, create the subscription, manage the subscription. So it either goes into a pending state or it goes into a trial period. Okay, so pending if it if it's not active until the future, active if it goes into trial period, or if they activate right away, and then it either goes into subscription expired, or past due, or eventually a cancel. Okay, so that's that's a pretty nice flow diagram. Pending, so yeah, active, past due, expired, canceled, next page plans. Before creating subscriptions, you must create a plan. Plans can't be created, updated, or deleted via the API. However, you can retrieve existing plans via the API. Okay, that's interesting. And you get a trial period, billing cycle, blah, blah, blah. Add-ons and discounts. You can't create or update them through the API. Add-ons and discounts can be applied manually on a case-by-case -case basis, or you can associate them with certain plans automatically. When, okay. Oh, you can. Okay, so when creating an add-on, you can specify the amount. So you can add more than one, but that's interesting that it didn't let you do it here. Like, in the add-on, if I do add one, I say, okay, add a, yeah, the extra VIP bonus, boom, add, but it doesn't let me add more than one on the dashboard. So that's kind of like a broken limitation of the UI here, unless I go in and like hack it in the form myself, <laughs> which I don't think is how it works, but okay. It's good to know, okay, so I can add the add-on. So you can do like, um, extra VIP times seven if you want. Unless that is, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll try it out, I guess. Add-on attributes, yeah, let's see here. Kind, quantity. The number of times this particular add-on is applied to the subscription. Okay, so it confirms you can definitely add the same add-on multiple times. Okay, creating subscriptions. Yes, please. Let's go to the Python SDK. To create a subscription, you only need a stored payment method token and a plan ID which must be created via the control panel.
Okay, interesting. Hopefully this will explain this more clearly. The subscription will be created using the price, trial, blah blah, specified within the plan's details. Okay, good. Okay, so that's the little code snippet to do it. But we actually need the token. Specifying merchant account. If you have multiple merchant account, you can pass it. Okay, not necessary here. Overriding plan details. Okay, that's fine. We could override them if we wanted to. Transaction flow, here we go. The transaction flow depends on when the subscription is set to start and whether it includes... Oh, no, no. I want... Ooh, this... This is interesting. How do I get that token? Oh, it's the same token. It's this token. Got it, got it, got it. That was confusing me at first, so like... Okay, so in our checkout... Instead of transact, we're gonna call subscription.create. And I think that should come from here. Subscription. Okay, and the payment method token. Is that the nonce? No, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. No, okay, we have to do this step first with the nonce. Once successfully created, you create, you can use transaction sale with the payment method. Token. Okay. Alternatively, you can create a new customer using customer.create. Oh boy. It's starting to get a little confusing. Okay, so we need to create the method and then get <sighs> import pprint, pprint, dot pprint, result. And then we'll try printing that token as well. Maybe it's just called token, so we'll just try that too. And then we'll try and create that with whatever the token is that we get. And our plan is called monthly subscription. All right. I have a feeling that's gonna break horribly, but it should put us in the right direction. Cannot import subscription. Okay, good start. No, so we are here in Python, game it, gateway dot payment, gateway dot payment method. Oh wait, no, no, I need to be back here. So when they call creating subscriptions, Python SDK, gateway dot subscription cannot import name subscription. Gateway subscription, gateway subscription gateway subscription what Python, Braintree, 
gateway subscription. Example. Now why can't it find it? Gateway.subscription. Now it's probably gonna break when I try and hit it though. So let's do, yeah, let's try and pay real quick. And 0920, okay, submit. Yeah, name gateway is not defined. Something, something's wacky. I'm gonna open this up in PyCharm because it has so much better charm. All right, PyCharm, can you help me out here? Can you help me figure out what's wrong with these imports? No, let's... Unresolved reference to gateway. Okay. Import this name, braintree.payment method. Okay. Oh. It's braintree.subscription, not gateway.subscription. Interesting. Did their API change and they didn't update their documentation or is is that not right? Because they don't, in the Python example, they're not showing the import in their example here. Gateway. They keep seeing if they all say gateway. Subscription, but it's Braintree. Subscription. Well, thanks for uh, not being labeled properly and me having to use PyCharm to get more help than the official documentation. You know, I've run into several little things so far that make me go, hmm, I wonder if I should really trust this system and this API and stuff, because it's like, okay, the express thing was kind of broken at the end. Uh, there, this Python one is kind of wacky, like, how come it can't find the gateway class? Or, okay, so, yeah, we got the gray ones that we're not even using that we can get rid of now. Now, we should have access to the gateway. we have from gateway and then so it's um, what are we trying to import from gateway we want gateway.payment method let's see it says no I can't find a reference to that there is no gateway dot payment method hold on brain tree 3.51 is it because maybe I have a different brain tree version? I did do the requirements install, right? Brain tree three fifty one zero. Python three app dot 
cannot import payment method. Python SDK gateway dot payment method without any import reference. Now wait a second, what is that little note? This code snippet now uses gateway instant methods instead of class level methods. Learn more. Class level versus instant methods. This page is only relevant for Ruby, Python, and PHP integration started before early 2018. In, on February 27, 2018, we made some changes to our Python documentation to recommend a different way to pass your credentials. Okay, they said if your code, your code can stay the exactly the same with no change. So, that's kind of insinuating that their old code should work just fine. So, import payment method, like... Is that a thing? No, that's not a thing either. From Braintree import payment method? Yeah, it, it exists there, definitely. Okay, so we'll just call payment method.create. Okay, now we do need request. Now Braintree.subscription too. From Braintree import subscription. Oh, subscription gateway. Okay, so it's not gateway, it's subscription gateway. This is really This is really not good. What changed? To shift towards this more flexible gateway. Braintree.configuration.configure Gateway equals Braintree Gateway. So that's how you get the gateway. Okay, so their documentation is... Okay, so their, their, example, their official example does it the old way. But it's not compatible with the new way. Even though they said you don't have to make any changes, apparently you do. This is this is uh, not giving me a lot of confidence, to be quite honest. Braintree.payment method has no create. Jeez. Payment method gateway, is that what I need to do too? So instead of gateway, it's this gateway, that gateway, this gateway, that gateway. Payment method gateway. Will you work? No, you don't work either. Okay, um, I'm not, I'm not happy. I mean, I'm, I'm not upset, I'm just not happy with Braintree, you know, their their documentation and the code examples have when I when I read documentation and I run examples, I expect them to work really well. From some from a place like this. From a place that's dealing with, with money transactions. I want their stuff to be crisp, clean, up to date and not leaving you with a bunch of questions. But their documentation is constantly leaving me asking questions. Yeah, like with this Python one, I'm like, okay, uh, well, where do you get the gateway? Is it is it an import? Oh, no, there's a little tiny note right here that tells you, oh, this, this is the whole way, and here's the whole background and why we changed it and what you have to do and how to fix it, but we didn't update our code examples and it breaks everything and it just leaves you guessing. So, I'm sorry, this, like, I, I, I'm stuck trying to figure out how to do the subscription, and now I, I mean, I think I know what I need to do, but what I don't want to do is go redo the whole configuration now. 
because they said your old examples should still work without any changes. Now, they're saying to get this gateway, I shouldn't just be importing gateway, I need to do this, um, yeah, gateway equals brain tree configuration and then pull all that. Um, then maybe the code for the gateway dot subscription create will work, but all right, all right, let's try it out. Now, how do I do um, Python quick read a file? I think I've got I've got a post on this uh, binary with Python. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my values again. So this is home nano dano brain tree sandbox. What do I need? Merchant ID. And actually, I don't want a binary file. I just want a file. So we'll say uh, merchant ID. Okay and then we want merchant ID, and then we want private key, and public key. And this is going to reflect the same values. And the scope should be okay for me to use here. And public key. I don't need these. Okay. Unresolved attribute. Okay, I guess I need to import environment too. Import environment. Oh, okay, so what? It can't. Great. Now it can't find that. Okay, watch. We'll do Alt Enter. No, Alt Enter. No, it can't. It can't even find it. Okay. Import Brain Tree. Dot. Yep. Yeah, okay. From Brain Tree. Dot Environment. No. From Brain Tree Import Environment. Environment dot sit dot sit sandbox. No, it's not there. It's what the heck? This is and this is supposed to be their new updated way to do it, and that doesn't work either. What's going on here? So where did they say what page was it where we were on where it said this is the new way? Yeah, now looks like this. So maybe they renamed it because I noticed there was uh, the lowercase one. So there was from brain tree dot environment import sandbox. Now what it can't cannot find a reference to that one either. Okay, so they've got a lowercase and an uppercase. None of them have a sandbox in it. Yeah, so what the heck and like there's no it, it kind of finds it like oh it yeah right oh no nope. no reference maybe that's just because it's like a compiled wheel or something I'll give it a chance but gee whiz no it won't even start 
honestly, um, not impressed, not impressed at all with with their documentation here and their examples. Yeah, this is this is all kind of leaving me with more questions than I had. Okay. Python brain tree subscription example. Subscription. Python brain tree developer documentation. Alright. Here we are. Subscription.create. <laughs> Great. It just says, yeah, hey, just call gateway.subscription.create. That's all there is to it. Now, is there maybe an example at the bottom of the page? Let's see. Important. No, yeah, okay. No, not a single import statement to help you work out where the gateway comes from. Not a single import statement anywhere. Not um, a constructor or anything to show you where, where those are coming from because, well, you know what, maybe, maybe my interpreter is bad. Maybe I'm using the wrong one. Does this one have brain tree? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm using the right one with brain tree. Is, I mean, is it a totally separate package I have to install? Do I have to, like, pip install Braintree subscriptions? Guides. Okay, we're going back to the guide. Recurring billing. Wow, oh, you just... Yeah, you just create a plan and call subscriptions. Great, it's just that simple! Yeah. Um... I'm gonna call their stuff a bust. I gotta say, because their example, like, okay, so they have these end-to-end -end examples, and that's what I ran with the flask, and that worked for the very basic straight checkout, but it did not, there's no subscription example in there. Yeah, so this, yeah, only the very, very basic transaction sale worked. And that code, I commented it out. Yeah, so that was transact, which came from Gateway. So from So you can see there's not much there. We go there. Oh, okay, and that's that's all it's doing is yeah. Brain tree gateway. Okay, so they're doing what they said they did in the new one. Okay, but all it has is find transaction. Okay, so where is that file? Oh. They created that gateway. It's a local it's a local one. But even when I tried to import uh, the subscription gateway and the payment method gateways, those didn't work either. Now, I can't just call gateway to create because that doesn't exist either. Um, subscription gateway. No, this was, sorry, this was the payment method gateway. And this one down here was the subscription gateway. So yeah, if we try and run that, 
Uh, yeah, okay, so it's still barfing on Braintree Sandbox. It still is just like, yo, I don't know where this Braintree.environment.sandbox is coming from. And I'm telling PyCharm, like, yo, I don't, I don't know either. And PyCharm's like, yo, I'm looking everywhere and I can't find it. Oh, dude, Ronald, hey, man. Sick DevOps AI, what do I think of Braintree? I don't like the docs? No, man, I don't. I don't like their examples, I don't like their docs. Like, they've been, they've been broken, confusing, misleading, incomplete. I'm trying to get the subscription and it's just like... Uh, like, okay, it, in the code example it says here, uh, Okay, what did they what did they do in there? They did Braintree.configuration. An environment was just a string, actually. So Yeah. Sandbox is what I literally passed the other one. So it's like they're they're telling you to use this constant that's no longer in the library. So their docs are totally out of sync with what's actually in the code repositories. Okay. So now, now it actually loads up. Okay, let's see how this works. Yeah, brain tree payment method gateway has no create. Yeah, so there's no there's no payment method gateway. There's no regular gateway. Brain tree gateway, yeah. I mean, I'll try. I'll try just doing regular gateway again. Gateway dot payment method dot create. All right, we'll try that. I'm just kind of shooting in the dark. Not even their docs are really giving me some direction. All right, let me start over here. No, no, come back. Tell me where you're listening. Alright, let's try it out. Card. Four ones, ones, ones. You know, I thought the PayPal API was bad. <laughs> and they bought Braintree because it had a better API. And, uh... Oh, it's not liking my, uh... Now it's not liking my my values here. Let me just make sure that they're actually loading. Yeah. Are you running? Yeah, you're loading. So Oh, it doesn't like this, I don't think, the this where it says sandbox. But that's what I'm passing here. BT environment is just literally a string that says sandbox. And then my merchant ID and all that good stuff. <sighs> yeah. I'm really not happy with their stuff. So, Ronald, you're asking who's their big competitor? Yeah, I think, like, the three that I wanted to weigh out was PayPal, Stripe, and Braintree. Now... PayPal is notorious for having kind of a, an old and weird API to work with. On top of that, I know for a fact that um, in their sandbox where you can test the events, where you can say like, hey, send a fake IPN event for a failed transaction. Send a fake su success transaction. They do not have event mocks for subscriptions. So you cannot mock up and say, hey, send me a fake subscription start uh, a fake subscription canceled you actually have to go into the sandbox ui and like sign up a subscription in the browser and cancel it and do all that like it's just like whoa why, why can't you just add a, a fake event for a subscription cancel you can't um so just dealing with that big headache now braintree looked like a good alternative because Braintree is a PayPal service. And because of that, you can accept PayPal and Venmo 
and Apple Pay and all the other good stuff. But you also get to embed it on your page and take PayPal and all that. So all that's good. And they're supposed to have a better API. But, and I did, I did do a little reading around and I, some people did say that compared to Stripe, the, ba- the Braintree API is, is a bit lacking. And I haven't tried Stripe. I looked through the documentation for Stripe and I have to say, just skimming through their documentation, it looked pristine. It looked really good. Uh, and it looked really attractive, but the only drawback to Stripe is that you can't accept PayPal. And I like PayPal, and so do a lot of other people. So I was like, okay, let's try Braintree out first because I would like to be able to take PayPal and credit cards, but the PayPal subscription programming is really gross to work with. Maybe Braintree would be better. And not not like, even if I got it to work, even if I finally figured out how to get it to work, it still leaves me with a lack of confidence that they're even going to ever update their documentation or ever update their examples. So... I'm leaning towards no. I'm leaning towards no. I think... I think I'm going to give Stripe a chance. And if their stuff is really is slick and smooth and works, I don't care if I don't accept PayPal. Um, PayPal is really easy and straightforward for straight up purchases. Just buy this, buy it, done. Give me money, here, done. It works good for that. And the Braintree one was okay for that too, but the subscriptions is really important to me and getting that right, I want to figure out how to do that, so... A little disappointed with the brain tree. And, you know, I went through their guide with the subscriptions and honestly even tried to kind of reverse engineer and figure out where where these values are, where they went, where they changed them, and where they put them. I, even with the help of PyCharm, it's like, I'm sorry, I don't know where they are either. So... I think I've explored enough to answer my questions about Braintree, and I may give it another chance, I may give it another fair shake, but I'm giving it a thumbs down. That's my verdict for now. Now I hope, I hope I don't finish this and then like, right as I go eat some dinner I realize the big mistake I made and why everything should have been working smoothly. (laughs) I totally overlooked it. But I just wanted to explore it. And I I had high hopes for it, I guess. Their API looked okay, and their documentation looked decent at, at a high level, at a glance. But I ran into problems on each, like, on each one of their things I had a small problem, and they all added up to leaving me with a very lack of confidence. So... And there's a couple other minor things, like, honestly, it it just seems... not the best. That's all I'm gonna say there. So... Okay. I would, I mean, any... I would love to get some feedback from other people. So... Let's see, Stripe versus Braintree versus PayPal. Now I did I did do a little googling just because I like to see what other people think even though I, I never trust them because people are always really opinionated and sometimes for bad reasons especially when it comes to frameworks so you gotta try them out yourself but there was one where is it um, there's the one website where they, they compare things Which one is it? There's one website that's always like, uh, which one's better? And people vote on it. I 
can't remember what the site is called now. But, um... Let's see... Look at all these pop-ups. I hate websites like this. Look at this. Okay, I've never visited here. It says, hey, can we give you desktop notifications? Well, no. And in the meantime, already another pop-up has popped up over the first one. There's another pop-up here. There's a third one up here. And there's a big ad here and a pop-up there. That was like five pop-ups. I'm not even going to read your article. I'm sorry. It just like grates on my nerves. <laughs> And look at all these little pop-up chats, geez. No. It's the one, it's the website where people vote. Yeah, it's kind of like this one. It looks kind of like this one. Okay, so people rate it. Um, and I wanted to just kind of see how they lined up in the community. So they both, I mean, they gave them both a very high number. Shoot, what is, uh... <laughs> it's bothering me, I can't remember that site now. It usually always pops up, like, right at the top. Um... Site point? No, 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 that's not the one. That's the one, uh that I just exited out of because it had a million pop-ups. Oh well. I recognize the name, I can't find it anywhere though. Slant? Yeah, maybe it is Slant. That sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, um, not exactly, it, it is just like this, but it's actually, it's a different site, I can't remember which one it is, but yeah, it is, it's almost exactly like this. So, let's see what other people say, PayPal, yeah, expensive fees, but it's got a lot of people and it's very widely accepted. I wanted to find it because I, I, I remember looking at the numbers and it was like 4,000 upvotes for Stripe and like 4,000 upvotes for PayPal and 100 upvotes for Braintree. <laughs> and I was just like, I thought maybe it must just be because it's new or newer, but maybe people really don't like it too. So maybe if I try PayPal vs. Braintree, that one will pop up. Compare- no, that's the same one. Quora, GetApp, SteelWiki. That's interesting, like, I swear those are always like the first ones that pop up. Is, is that one website that's kind of like Slant. But... Stackshare? Oh, this, I think this was it. Yeah, this is the one, but this isn't the one I thought it was. Stackshare. Okay, so yeah, look. Stripe, uh, almost 4,000. PayPal's trailing behind, a little over three. And then <laughs> Braintree's got 297. It's just like, look at the numbers compared to that. So when, like, how old is Braintree? It can't be that new. Um, was acquired by PayPal in 2013. So it's been a good six, well, going on six years of acquisition. So you'd think maybe there'd be more adoption, but there's not. Yeah, what are the cons? Lacking documentation for mobile. There's just not much there. 
if you look at the search, yeah, if you look at the search, like, PayPal is just dominant. Dominant, dominant, dominant. I would love to accept PayPal and credit cards because that's the that's the ideal. PayPal is just so ubiquitous. Yeah. Okay, so this person is saying Stripe is the most friendly web payment system around. Stripe has been developed for web users. Their APIs are easy to use and understandable, and they have support for lots of languages. This guy says working with PayPal is a nightmare. PayPal comes with tons of old APIs and new ones that are incomplete. There are bugs in the documentation, bugs with their implementation, and their support department is completely useless. Yeah. So... I agree, like, their, their testing tools aren't even adequate because they... Uh, you can't even fake a subscription event to test it, okay? So, right there is a huge gap in something that's been around for, like, decades now. Their subscription feature? And, it, yeah, and it's just nasty. Now this person says, I love Stripe. They were super, super easy to set up. Yeah, if you're doing just a straight payment, it really is easy just to drop in the Stripe button, just like a buy button. Uh, Buzzmin Kunhun says, Man, you are covering really important topic, cool R. Also, how to deploy Django and go live like a production app. Um, you want to look up... If you want to go production with Django, I'll take a quick side side note here. Um, use Mod Whiskey on Apache if you want to use Apache. Use Mod Whiskey. I have, I have a post somewhere on my site about using it. Otherwise, you can use Nginx with uh, something like UWSGI. Uh, use MicroWSGI, UWSGI with Nginx as like a reverse proxy, or I, I kind of prefer the uh, uh, ModWSGI with Apache, it's pretty easy to set up. So this person says they had an excellent experience integrating Braintree. I had the opportunity to integrate Braintree with Ruby on Rails. You know, that's interesting because on their documentation, all of the documentation defaulted to the Ruby SDK. And this person says they use Ruby on Rails and they had a great time. So that kind of leads me to believe that their Ruby implementation is probably the most supported. Considering that's the one all the documentation defaults to, I have a feeling maybe that's why their, their other ones are kind of lacking and outdated. Buzzmint says, you have a website? Yeah, I've got a website. DevDungeon.com. You should go there, and if you're not on the Discord, come on the right and click join me on Discord. And buy like 20 copies of my book while you're at it. <laughs> and yeah, check out uh, check out the posts there. I got a lot of posts. Uh, okay. They use Stripe. Very simple. Braintree. Braintree handles recurring credit card and payment methods. We like the extensive developer documentation. This guy uses PayPal. We only use PayPal for direct debit charge. Okay. Yeah, subscriptions are the ones that are like notoriously more difficult because you gotta deal with how to handle the late ones, the canceled ones, the prorated if you upgrade, prorated if you downgrade, managing, um, the state after they cancel. This was something someone pointed out is that with Braintree, when a subscription ends, Braintree immediately sets the subscription to canceled. And it's up to you on your own, in your own logic, in your app to go, oh, well they canceled it, but they should still have another 17 days and four hours of access that I'm gonna grant to them until their subscription should expire. So it leaves you with a whole extra step of that on your own versus Stripe where they actually send you like a webhook event the moment the subscription expires. So if the person cancels their subscription but they still have, you know, two weeks left on it, Stripe will consider it open until it actually expires and then send you a message so that you can act on it immediately. They all Stripe also handles prorating between different subscription levels better. 
So all of these things combined is 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 pushing me towards Strike, to be honest. I was I'm interested to see people who uh because this talks about the people who do what they do use. I'd be interested in seeing why people don't like Braintree. What if I just type in Braintree sucks? <laughs> okay, I, ha I had to I had to check this out and see see what maybe maybe there's a couple people who rant. Beware of Braintree from from like four or five months ago. A month ago I launched Remote Only IO, and about a week ago got its first paid listing. A couple days after I got an email from Braintree saying my account has been flagged. Oh, okay, so he just had a, a crappy experience with that. How Braintree destroyed a successful taxi startup. After five days... Braintree found a way to pay half the outstanding amount. Okay, so they had some bad experience too. Okay, now this one. Why startups should avoid Stripe? Okay, more opinions. Uh, oh, a few hours after this post, we got our account reinstated. <laughs> so they, they must have got their account banned and complained about it, and then... They got it back, so it must have been some kind of mistake. Stripe versus PayPal, yeah, like it really, it really comes down to: Would you rather accept PayPal and deal with the pain of the development side for your users' benefit, or do you use Stripe because it makes your life easier, even though you can't accept PayPal? And I'd be curious to see what the numbers are like on how many people would choose not to use a service if they couldn't use PayPal. Would that be like 10%? Would it be like a 50% downturn? Oh, here's, here's a graph. Market share for payment processing. Um, okay. PayPal Stripe Square. PayPal. <laughs> Look how big PayPal is. It's like two-thirds. Well, I guess this is just who accepts it, not how many people use it. So that's a different that's a different question. Alright. Alright guys, well thanks for bearing with me. I'm I'm not gonna bother trying the brain tree. Like like I said, their Ruby one. Vladimir says, always the user benefit. Well, I, I generally agree, I do, but the subscriptions with PayPal are just so terrible to work with. And if you've ever used a subscription as a customer on PayPal, I don't really like that workflow, to be quite honest. Like, you have to kind of dig around and find your subscriptions. Um, so yeah... It makes me wonder if uh, the brain tree is, is because they really support the Ruby. Like, if you go to their documentation... And we'll go to like a PayPal example. Well, this one just fall. Oh, this is the client one. That's why. Examples. Yeah, these are the end-to-end -end examples I looked at. And so we looked at the Python one, and only the straight payment worked. All right, guys. Well, I'm not going to spin my wheels on this one anymore. I'm going to have to think. I'm going to have to think about this. I think tomorrow I might do Stripe, and we'll see how that goes. So, appreciate it, everybody. Sorry we never got the subscription working for the Brain Tree, 
but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bang on it anymore. I I got a feel for it, and you know Vladimir's point about it's always 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 do what's better for the user. You say PHP works. Well, I mean, look, the example worked. The 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 Python example that they provided worked just to do the straight like buy something for ten dollars but when you try and add the subscriptions it totally breaks and when you look through the subscription documentation it just says called gateway dot this but like it's the gateway uh i couldn't find the classes and it couldn't they couldn't tell me where they were and it said use this one and i used it and then it you know the the constants that it was telling me to use weren't didn't exist in the library, and it was just it was awful. I mean seriously, I've I've worked with tons of APIs and tons of frameworks, so I've seen really good ones and I've seen really bad ones. At a high level, their their one looked good here, but like there were little broken pieces in in like. Okay, so we did the tutorial and there was a broken piece. We did the Python one and it worked kind of out of the box, but then we did the subscriptions. There was like the missing documentation and I don't want to rant anymore. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, it's not the worst. I mean, it's not the worst I've ever seen, but there's too many holes. There were too many holes in it that I wouldn't feel comfortable betting a whole business on it. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, not after my two hours of experience with it, but, um... Let's see, do they have subscriptions? So, like, let's try looking at their, their Python brain tree source code. Maybe we can actually get some insight into what the heck is going on. Official documentation. Yeah, so we did that, we installed everything, yeah. And see like this didn't even exist. Braintree uh Braintree dot environment. Yeah, and this is like, this is what was really annoying, was like, this didn't exist anywhere. No, this is Flask, Frame Tree Flask, no, I wanted, yeah, Python. So, where's... Frame Tree Environment? Brain tree environment. Okay, so really it should be like from brain tree dot environment dot capital environment dot sandbox. Oh no, here it is. Environment dot sandbox. So it is lowercase environment dot uppercase environment. So it's like their like their example is is broken. So right here they say braintree.environment.sandbox, but that is that's wrong. Like print it, it's gonna say, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Doesn't exist. Um, and if you try and do uh, from braintree dot environment import sandbox like no it still doesn't it doesn't recognize that either but if you do brain tree because this is the name of the package and then that's the name of the class um, then maybe you can do environment.sandbox but no see even then Unresolved. Unresolved attribute sandbox. Um, 
Braintree environment, environment, and we can go see very clearly Braintree. Um, environment. Environment. And that's like, um... Let's see, okay, now it's saying here... It's saying, yeah, this is how you should use it, but... <laughs> but you can't use it like that. I don't, like, that's why it's so... Uh... Frustrating and, and confusing. Yeah, a class pass in one of the following values as the first argument. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, can't find it. So... See, it's just so, like, what is going on? Yeah. When was this last updated? January 24th? Like, okay, let me try their sample code. We'll do it, we'll just make a test.py and we'll drop it in and yeah, sure, why not, we'll grab these two. Yeah, <laughs> look at their their example. Their example doesn't even it's not even valid it's not even valid syntax. Look, like they left a comma off right there. And without the comma it it's like it legit doesn't work. <laughs> it's all broken. So they actually in their readme, in their official readme quick start example, have broken code. This is what I mean, it's like it's just sloppy. It's sloppy, it's broken, it's not tight and clean and pristine, and that really bothers me. And it's like, everywhere I turn, there's like, uh, guys, it's like you left a big typo. It's like, oh, oops, our official thing actually said Sunbax. Yeah, broken without the comma. Okay, anyway. And then, whatever, some nonce. It's not even gonna work. It's not even. It's not even gonna start because it's not gonna find this sandbox. And the only import they did was brain tree. It's the only import they did. Python three test.py. Okay, it actually worked. It actually imported it. So how come in app.py it can't find it when when we when we do it? Holy shit, it actually worked. No. Um authentication error. Yeah, let's start over. Oh nine twenty. All right, brain tree authentication error. Authentication error now, huh? 
Um, it's probably because I actually... Where is it? Uh, how far is it actually getting now? App.py, compat... App.py... Let's see, where's my... Line 85? Line 85, huh? Let's try... Let's try going back to that. All right. Oh, what? I, didn't, I never noticed this one on the right last time. Okay, so we're back to the the regular payment working, but what I actually want to call is um, gateway dot payment method create basically, and then yeah, we need to print out the. So we don't want to transact. We first have to create a payment method, and then we can call the subscription, but they basically say, like, in their documentation for oops, creating subscriptions. Okay, so this is what they say. Gateway.subscription.create Okay. Okay, will you work? That is the big question. Okay. Invalid keys, customer ID. Um... Vladimir says, glad you didn't quit then. Well, look, I'm still having the same, I'm still having the same problem here. All I did was go back and then go forward again. But, like, stuff like this just really bothers me, like, did they not, did they literally not even test this little snippet of code before telling it to the whole world? Like, here's our official quick start example. Didn't even notice a big red squiggly line. Amount, okay, so. Yeah, I don't wanna do a sale. I know how to do a sale. I wanna do a subscription. But I don't I don't have a customer ID. So I don't know. What happens if I just commented out? Uh, Buzzmin says, also, coding with Mitch recommends Stripe 2. Why don't you collaborate? You two are the coolest. Um, I don't I don't know him. I don't know that channel. I'll check it out. Coding with Mitch, you say? Yeah, I'll check it out. You use Drupal? Uh, yes, Dev Dungeon is in Drupal. Drupal 7. Are you going to redo it? I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about redoing it for a long time. Okay, now we're getting an authentication error. Which is weird because... Our authentication is working fine with this transact. Okay, so subscription, subscription gateway, dot create, okay, parameters. Uh, 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. My bad. I'm, I'm being really... Um, it's payment method. Sorry. That's what I want. I want the payment method. And then, from the payment method, I get... Same thing? Now why is it giving me that? Am I missing the nonce? No, I got the nonce. And I'll print it out just to make sure. And then... And see, they don't tell you, like, okay, to create a subscription, you only need a stored payment method token and a plan ID. Okay, but then they kind of gloss over the payment method thing they send you here. They say a payment method represents transactable payment information, such as credit card or PayPal or whatever. Okay. Payment methods belong to a customer, are securely stored. Okay. Payment method dot create. Okay, gateway dot payment method dot create. Yeah, that's like that's exactly what I have in the code. I copied it right from their docs. This code snippet now uses gateway instant methods. Yeah, and that's fine. Alternatively, you can create a new customer with the pay method using customer dot create with the payment method nonce. Okay, I think that's what I want to do then. So, do I do gateway.customer.create? But then, I don't need to give it an ID because they're gonna give me an ID. Oh, I need all this information. Okay, so I guess I would have to look up the user if they already existed. Now is there like a custom value where I can put like an ID to tie them? I guess maybe we'll, we will get a customer ID back. Okay, so yeah, find. Okay, so we'll try creating a customer. We'll start over here, the, the workflow. Test. Authentication error. So the token nonce is fine. Line 92. Okay, let's go back to customer create. Okay, so this doesn't work. Big surprise. <laughs> um, nothing's really surprising me anymore with the fin. So, payment method create using customer ID. So, yeah, this this cus gateway customer create is not working because it says we're not authorized. Okay, you can add custom fields. That's good. Creating a customer. Customer create. Okay, let's try. Let's try just adding first name, last name. And wait a second. Where does the where does that nonce go? 
They said use the nonce to create the customer, but they don't tell you where to put it. See, like, you see what I mean? Like, they, they tell you, oh, you just need to go do that, but then they don't tell you how to do that. So, like, let's go back up. Um, Yeah, you just need the payment method token. Okay, payment method token. You just create a user using the payment nonce. Okay. And this, like, this is exactly what I'm doing, is it not? Like, watch, I'm gonna copy and paste that. It's gonna be like exactly the same. Yeah, it is, it's exactly the same. Give it another shot. I don't even know where my window is now. Oh, uh, what, what port are you on? Yeah. I mean, they just say, okay, uh, you just run customer create and you're good to go. Okay. But, like, I can call transact, no problem. But if I call customer create, it just says I'm not logged in. I'm not off the, I'm not authorized no authentication I'm not authenticated okay Yeah, like, this is all good. This is all good. We did all of that. That all worked. As soon as you try and go over to the subscriptions, though, it just starts breaking and the documentation points you from one page to the other. But, like... This doesn't... Do I have to change something about the gateway? Like, their examples are just too incomplete. Just call Gateway Customer. Okay, well, where is Gateway.Customer coming from? Because apparently, even if I'm calling the right one, I'm not loading it right. But they tell me how to load it here, and it, and, and that's exactly what's happening in my Gateway code here. Yeah, this is, um... Braintree.subscription Gateway.subscription Gateway.payment method 
payment method nonce payment method uh, customer dot yeah gateway dot customer dot create doesn't work it just doesn't work it just says I'm not authenticated Common errors. There are a couple common errors you may see if you make a server request. Okay. For authentication, authorization, or configuration errors related to your authentication credentials themselves. Is it like, do I have to go set up my credentials so that I can do subscriptions? Authentication error. Raise when your API keys are incorrect. But it works to do the other stuff, so is it like it, it I authenticate just fine when I do the single transaction sale. But when I do the subscription, suddenly it says I'm not authenticated. Not I'm not authorized, not like I logged in but my user doesn't have the right to do subscription stuff. It just says no, we don't even know who you are. You're not authenticated. So it's like this customer gateway this customer gateway is not authenticating me. Yeah, and cr and create is not working. Okay, yeah, go to your roles. Okay, let me go to my user roles. Yeah. This is, this is bad, this is bad. It's, I'm not, I'm not liking this, I'm sorry. I tried to persevere through it and give it another shot, but I don't know what the heck is going on with my my customer gateway not being authenticated, yet the transaction one authenticates just fine. This one authenticates just fine, but not this one. Yeah, I'm giving up. I've had enough of this for now, and I'm kind of running out of ideas to figure out why the heck it says I'm unauthenticated. And basically all they're saying is, your API keys are incorrect, but my API keys aren't incorrect because I can authenticate and it knows who I am when I do this okay so we'll just triple confirm again that this does work just fine Uh, has no- oh. Yeah, these are all these debug statements I don't need anymore either. Okay, now my nonce is broken, so I have to restart the whole process. Check it out. Transaction failed! 
Your transaction test has the status of gateway rejected. Why did it reject it? Did I, uh... Did I forget to do something? See the brain tree response status, gateway rejected. Uh, did I, did I punch in the number wrong or something? Oh yeah, I must have punched in the number wrong. Because, yeah, the, the payment, the regular payment works just fine. And obviously I authenticated just fine too. Because if we go here and we look at our transactions, we can clearly see that, um these transactions went through. But none of the subscriptions. Yeah, none of the subscriptions go through. Those are all totally broken. I can't even create the customer. It's not creating the customers either. So, uh, yeah, like, that works cool, but your documentation sucks, I'm sorry. Is there not, like, a single example of a subscription? Like, a full-on example? Yeah, maybe, um... Maybe if we try Ruby, maybe we'll get some insight. Merchant account ID. You know, they said that was optional. They said that was optional if you wanted to override it. I wonder if it's actually required and that's why it can't figure out that's why I can't figure out who I am and why I'm not authenticated so why don't we why don't we try passing that in even though the example they showed us before didn't need it their official documentation pandals man I I think you're right Oh gosh, I think you're right. You're saying because I'm I'm doing the tokenization method. I'm doing the tokenization which is actually limiting. And you're right. You're absolutely right. It's um the the tokenization keys are not as good as the API keys. But, now wait a second. What I'm using is, I guess it's my client ID? So do I need to uh, let's let's try it out. Let me try swapping out. Um, I'm gonna echo that into my brain tree sandbox um, public key. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my private one. Pandals, I think you might have just saved me like a whole bunch of headache. Okay, now how do I copy this without showing you guys? Um, well, that's... You know, that's another thing I really don't like about it is... There's... This is the second instance... Okay, in the first instance, my private key was just displayed on the page. It wasn't hidden, it wasn't start out. There was no... Show or hide. Um... And in this one I've got view, but I don't have a copy. Like, I can't copy it without showing you guys my private key. Granted, it is the sandbox. 
and I can I can delete this one. So, okay, I don't I don't mind then, um, because the other one actually wouldn't let me delete it. The one that they publicly showed on the page with uh, no no hiding didn't allow me to delete it. So, whatever. All right. Am I gonna bang my head against the wall? Because that was all it was. And I'm gonna leave it off there. Okay, then I wanna print out all, all that debug stuff again. And, whoa. Oh, I didn't mean to load up WebStorm. Go away. Okay, I guess we'll try this again. No, let's let's just start fresh to make sure we got a good nonce. Okay, and 0920, go. Authentication error. Well, it was a good suggestion, Pandals. <laughs> oh, but that didn't seem to do it. Why don't we why don't we try for good measure merchant ID? Alright, try it one more time. Now is my front end actually getting the token client token client yeah client token is being passed from my back end yeah the client token is being passed here so they're getting it in the code that's that's fine that's good invalid keys merchant id invalid it's not even accepting it um Customer create. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Okay, well, I gave that a shot and that that wasn't enough. I had high hopes. I had high hopes for swapping out those API keys, but I am curious now with that with those API keys that I just added. Will the old stuff still work the same? Okay, will this still work the same with the new API keys? Yes. Okay. So, the interesting thing too is like, if you go to the recurring billing thing, like, they don't mention anything about needing the, uh, the, the other key. They don't mention anything about that, if it is needed. To set it up, you'll need to create a plan. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we did that. Creating subscriptions. Okay. You need a payment method token. Okay, to create that, you can create the payment method with the customer ID for an existing customer. Alternatively, you can create a new customer, which is what I'm trying to do and you 
Create a new customer using the payment method knots. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to do. And if I go to the Python example, it's... The nonce isn't in there anywhere. Where's the nonce? Where is that payment method nonce? How do I use the nonce to create the customer if I don't pass it? There, okay, so it is a value you pass. And I am passing it. I am passing it um, here, payment method nonce. Oops, let me go back. Payment method nonce. Examples. You can optionally choose what you want the ID to be. Blank customer. If you're only interested in storing payment, you don't even need customer info. See, like, this is what's... This is what's really bothering me. They, they're like, this is all you need to do. But... <laughs> obviously, there's something I'm missing. Authentication error. Yeah. I'm going to look online and see if I can find somebody's example that maybe will shed some light onto what I'm missing. Otherwise, I'm done with this. I am just done with it. For tonight. I may give it again another shake, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't go out today and recommend this to a friend. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, that's the official actual page. Set up a plan. Okay, we did that. We set up our API keys did that create a customer record with a credit card Cust okay so they're calling customer create but it says we don't like we don't even have to give it anything it said we could actually create an empty customer object if we wanted but that doesn't work it doesn't work and why not? Like, why not? Yeah. Let's try... Customer, customer create. Yeah, there's like, nothing helpful here. It just says, customer create. Creates a customer. Create a customer! Like, that's awesome documentation! <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, this is the page I've looked at like a dozen times already. Okay. Yeah. This just isn't working, and it's it's not clear why to me. I'm done spinning my wheels on this. Coding with Mitch? Yeah, I'll have to check this out. Thanks for that suggestion. Well, anyway, guys, I hope it wasn't uh, too much of a bummer, and um, I was a bit disappointed, and it's, it's kind of rare that happens, but... I, I, was, I was disappointed. I'm disappointed with their, their stuff, especially the fact that like their official examples are broken. Their official examples have like syntax errors in it. It's kind of inexcusable for, for that, I mean, I'm sorry. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something. 
and tomorrow I'll probably be looking at Stripe. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about Stripe. Their documentation really does look top notch, and I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a shot tomorrow. So that's that's what we'll do tomorrow, I think. So appreciate it, everybody. Catch you tomorrow.